Hi there, everyone. Welcome to today's A Plusify webinar about how to create complicated reports in dashboards in Nimble. Uh, this is Vinu Deschetti. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing for A Plusify. We love doing these webinars. They're educational and meant to share with you what we've learned along our Nimble development uh, ways and want to share that off to you. Um, just a few housekeeping items to go over. Everyone will be muted today, but we still want you to participate. So definitely ask your questions in the chat section of the Zoom webinar or even put it in the Q&A section. We'll get to them as we can, uh, but don't worry, at the very end, we'll have time for Q&A. So we'll definitely ask your questions as you think of them or save them to the end. Again, um, today's webinar is uh, how to create complicated reports and dashboards in Nimble, which sits on top of Salesforce. So we've got a lot of good goodies for you today. I want to introduce you to uh, Nidish Garg. He is our Chief Operating Officer for Aplusify. He has a task force of internal developers and they meet on a regular basis and they talk about what's new and nimble, what's uh, what's coming up, what's working, what's not working. So they really do uh, have a, a really good camaraderie of bringing everyone together to make sure we're doing the best we can for nimble and keeping on top of what is uh, the latest. So Nidish, welcome. We're I'm looking forward to uh, hearing from you today about all things uh, reports and dashboards in Nimble. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can share yours. Oh, Nidish, you're um, you're muted. <laughs> oh, sorry, right. Uh, thank you, Vino, and I think welcome all to everyone who is uh, participating in this webinar. I think it's a very interesting webinar, especially for these uh, reports and dashboards. So let me share my screen. Just give me a second. Yep. So, hope you're able to see my slides. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, good. So, I think uh, as Vinu has already told that this webinar is all about how you can actually create reports and dashboards in Nimble AMS. Uh, and I think what we would be doing in this webinar uh, would be actually going through the report journey. We will tell you the uh, a bit about the importance of reports and dashboards in your system. And then maybe we'll take you through how to create a report in Nimble AMS by following certain four or five steps that can actually help you understand uh, creating reports in Nimble. And then uh, we can talk about different dashboards that you can create uh, in your Nimble AMS and how they can actually help you a lot in understanding your members, donors, uh, and everyone who is uh, there in your association or nonprofits. So I think let's get started. So why actually, why do we need reports and dashboards? So every system that we use, uh, the whole uh, crux of that system is that we want to actually uh, store a lot of information and data about uh, our members, uh, their activities, uh, and everything that we want to learn from them. Right. And I think reports and dashboards are the best source uh, and a visual representation of what we can actually uh, understand about them. So as you can see in the screen, right, uh, the left part displays different dashboards and reports, which are actually some figures about the members, some figures about your events, and some figures about uh, your activities that your members might be doing in your associations. So if you see that in a visual form, obviously it uh, leaves a better impact and is easy to understand. It's easy to visualize uh, if you are able to see that kind of dashboards. So working with different uh, global customers that we have been for and working with different associations, uh, we have realized that 
reports and dashboards mainly serve three main purposes and these are the three main picks from our side there are many others but this is the top three that we think uh, are the top uh, 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 selling points of reports and dashboards so when when as i told you when when uh, we store data in our system uh, that data has to be uh, consistent it has to be correct uh, so how do you know that right uh, there are lots of data in the system now how do you make sure that the data that is there in your system is accurate consistent uh, uh, and is not the bad data that we are talking about now uh, you can pull out different reports maybe you have members who don't have the date of birth in the system maybe you have members who don't have the correct addresses in your system now the reports are the only way right to actually know what data is bad in your system so there are means of tracking your bad data right because it's all data that you pull in the reports and if that data is not correct uh, then there is no point in uh, pulling those reports because that will present you with wrong information and the wrong perception about uh, your members their activities or anything that you are searching for so first and foremost i think the reports and dashboards actually help you track bad data in your system which you can actually then find ways to remove it then when you are actually working in an organization it's not just the ams that you are using uh, you may be using a lot of other systems which are actually either integrated with your system or not integrated with it so you might be using ams system for your association management then you might be using uh, an events app for managing your events then maybe you are using a salesforce crm uh, maybe you are, you are using an lms system so all these systems are something which a typical uh, association or a non profit use and how do you actually make sure that the data in all these systems you can actually view at one place so all these decentralized systems uh, can be integrated by means of pulling in data uh, either through integrating these systems or pulling in data from in reports through different decentralized systems and then uh, getting a holistic view of uh, what is there in the system and what is not there in the system so reports actually help you uh, uh, integrate your decentralized information that is present in various systems so an example may be that you may want to uh, understand how many members of your association actually participated in an event that uh, happened last week now you can only pull that information if you have data in your events app you have data in your ams system and uh, you have cross filtered that data so uh, reports are the best way to actually see that and we will actually see in subsequent screens on how you can actually do that uh, now obviously uh, as i told you you can visualize the data uh, when it is presented in a visual format like you can see the screen in the form of a bar chart in the form of a uh, pie chart so these figures actually uh, create a uh, it's easy to understand it's easy to visualize rather than having uh, a lot of columns so if even if your uh, senior management wants to view uh, concise data of what is happening in the system he can actually get a, a very uh, holistic view of what is happening in your system by viewing these dashboards and reports and these are something that you can obviously customize so i think these these are the main benefits of reports and dashboards and in the subsequent screens we will see how we can actually create reports and these dashboards before you go further, I forgot to send out a poll. We like to do these polls to get a sense of who's in our audience and so we can tailor the conversation sure. a little bit today. So I've launched the poll here, everyone. So take your time in responding. Basically, we just want to know a couple of things. We want to see uh, what kind of level you're at when it comes to creating those reports and dashboards. Um, and then also, who in your organization does that? Is that um, going to be, um, is each user responsible for their own? Do you have an admin or do you need some help? Um, I, I think 
um, it'll be interesting to see what you all have to say. I'm going to leave this up for a little bit. And Nidish, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, take us through um, more of your presentation? Sure. So, uh, how does uh, uh, comprehensive reporting helps your association and nonprofits? So, as I told you, you might have different systems uh, uh, integrated in your organizations, which can be your event apps. So, how do you make sure that uh, what information, how do you make sure that the information that you collected the event is actually get you are getting a real time view of that or are you able to understand the uh, topics that people actually love in your events how do you understand the uh, event members better so that in the next event when you do right you are able to plan it better and you are able to uh, get rid of things that may have uh, been an issue in your previous events and all these things can only happen when you pull out the data from different event that has happened, uh, pick out different members from which state they actually came to your event, uh, what uh, topics were they interested in, uh, what is something uh, that they would want in future. So all these things can be easily pulled in uh, in reports and dashboards. So it gives you a, and we will see in subsequent dashboards how this uh, actually happens. Then. If you are able to get a lot of information about your members and donors, so information can be, you can actually pull a report which uh, tells you like, these are the uh, top uh, 20 donors uh, in your system. So you know, like these are the 20, top 20 donors and you can have a different approach to them uh, when you are talking to them, right? Or you may be, providing with them with certain kind of uh, benefits or discounts. Similarly, if you want to understand your members, it's very important to understand who are your active members, who are the members who have actually renewed for the last five years, who are the members who have not renewed. So that would actually help you uh, understand your members. Then as I told you, if you are able to identify the bad data in your system, uh, you can have uh, define various ways to actually uh, fix that data and eliminate bad data so that you get good data in your system good data which good data means the data is consistent accurate uh, and you are able to pull in and see the right information in the reports so that you can do then you can also actually track activities of your members uh, so you can actually uh, track like if there's any information that your uh, members require or what what is something that they are actually interested in doing or what are, the, what are their tastes, what are something. So if you are a music association, right, what kind of instruments do they like? What kinds of classes they are interested in? What kind of uh, websites they are visiting, right? So you can track your members and tracking is the best way to understand your members, right? So tracking leads to better engagement and better engagement leads to member retention. So, and then obviously you can monitor grants and revenues because that is something which is related to running your organization or your association better. So you can see like which uh, the revenue is generated from what type of uh, events or from what donations, right? So you can all monitor that and maybe present this holistic view to anyone who wants to have that, right? And they will, and once you understand all this, right, it will actually help you in uh, engaging with your customers better, engaging with your donors better, uh, and uh, maybe understand what is wrong within your AMS and how you can actually improve things. So it would be a lot of continuous improvement that you can actually uh, see in your AMS and can do it so that you uh, engage the members better and you are able to sustain them for a longer period of time. Uh, moving forward, what we will do is uh, we will actually tell you how to create a report in Nimble in four easy steps, right? So people think it's like very difficult. Most of our users are 
uh, come with a complaint that uh, how do we create reports uh, so i think these four steps will actually help you out in understanding how simple it is to create reports in ams it's it's quite easy and anyone can do it if you have the right data in place so what we are going to uh, so how do you create a report right so when you log in into your nimble ams right so as you can see right you see these kind of tabs home chapter reports so you have to click on the reports tab here and once you click that you will have a button here which says new report right now you can have a new report in salesforce classic and if you have implemented lightning obviously it will give you this default feature of creating a new report in lightning so you click on new report right and so this is step one, you go to the reports, you click on new report. Then once you do that, right, you will be asked in this box right here, blue one with blue outline on what report type do you want to choose here? So here, what we are trying to do is create a report that actually lists the uh, donors in the ascending order. We want to see who are the donors who have given the highest donation in this report? So these are on the left side. If you see, uh, these are the report types, right? You have accounts and contacts, all these objects uh, that report would pertain to. And then you can also search for a particular report type by typing in this text box. So since donation is a kind of order, we are selecting orders with order items. So if you can see, we have selected orders with order, order items, right? And then hit the continue button. So this is step two. We clicked, step one was we went to the report, we clicked new reports, then we have selected the report type. And this is, this is all built in within a Nimble AMS. You don't have to do any kind of customization with it, right? And now you can see the screen, right? Where if you see on the, so the third step is that there would be different fields and columns in your reports. So columns are these order ID, bill to type name, transaction date, total payment, rated date. And all these columns are listed here at the left hand side. If you see, you can see this columns uh, heading and you will see all the columns that are pertaining to that particular report right now since we are pulling in a report for donations right so our record type has to be donation so if you see the record type items here you can see record type registration registration means members who have registered uh, membership means they want to renew their membership and similarly donation means order type, record type donation means people who have donated money so you click if you see filter by record type name and equals donation right so what it will do is it will actually put pull the pull all the records that belong to donations right and you will get a list of all the donations right but what we want is uh people the donors who are uh, at the top right so what you then do is so if you see you have got 20 record types donation 20 donors and since you have to get the uh, donors on the top who have given the most donation, you would sort this with an ascending order, right? If you do it in a descending fashion, right, it will print the, uh, from lowest to highest, right? What you want to do is from the highest to the lowest. So it will actually print this entire report from the highest donor and going lower. And then once you hit the continue button, right, the report is generated. So what this report has done is it has actually uh, given, so bill two is the donor names, right? And the order ID, the uh, transaction ID, the transaction date, and the donor payment amount, and when it was actually done. So in, the, in these four steps, what you have done is you have pulled out a report of all the donors, who have given you the highest donation in the ascending order, right? So it's just 
four clicks that you have to do to generate this report, right? So things can't be easier than that. The only thing is you need to actually understand what Nimble AMS provides in terms of reports and dashboards. And you have to, maybe if your team is not comfortable in doing that, maybe take some help from either third party or anything and get these things right because there is no point in building stuff which is already provided by the AMS. And Nimble AMS generally provides a lot of reports unless you need very complex reports which you need to customize. Uh, that also can be done, right? But simple reports you can always do. And most of our customers we have realized are so scared of this reporting that, uh, and they're scared because they don't know these steps, right? Once you know these steps on how to do it, uh, I think uh, things are very easy, like these four steps that we did. Uh, and uh, you can actually pull out a report very easily from any AMS, right? We are talking about Nimble here, but every AMS has that feature because the whole point of using AMS is to understand your members, your donors better, and the reports are the best way to understand it. So every AMS will have that reporting feature, a strong reporting feature, uh, which the a lot of AMSs that we have worked upon, whether it's Fontiva, whether it's Nimble, or whether it's Salsa, right? we have realized that the reportings have been very strong. It's just that you have to understand it. And they are very simple, right? They are not complex. Uh, you just need four or five clicks of button. And you just have to make sure that the data in your system is correct because this report is all, will only pull the data that is stored in your system. So when I was talking about bad data, right? That is something that you have to take care of, all right? And that is something which you can actually, if you're not, comp uh, if you're not, uh, uh, technically savvy or you don't have a technical team in place you can ask for help because that is very important to keep your data clean to have good reports Nidish, before you move on to dashboards a couple of questions what you've shown us today is this um only in lightning or can you do also do this in classic we can do that in classic so i will show you like if you move back to the uh first screen yeah, this one. So if you see, uh, there are two options, uh, new report in Salesforce Classic and then new report because this has already got Lightning implemented. So it is giving you two options. So the option, if you want to put it in Classic, the methodology remains the same. Instead of new report, we have to do new report Salesforce Classic. That's it. There is no other difference. And then I think recently in a recent web webinar you did, you talked a little bit about a Salesforce uh, updates that were happening in the in the latest release. And one of them had to do with updating some of the report uh, report features um, that was only available in Lightning. Can you talk a little bit about what that update is that affects reports? Yeah, there were a lot of yeah, there were a lot of uh, report features uh, that were actually uh, available in Salesforce update. And one of the features was that you can actually uh, mail the reports in a CSV format, right? Initially, uh, in the last Salesforce uh, version, you were not able to uh, send the reports to anyone in a CSV format. So what CSV, so, so when I say CSV, CSV means comma, comma separated value. So if you send a report to someone in a comma separated value format, he can actually open that report in an Excel and all the columns uh, are automatically handled by Excel, right? And it's easy to manipulate those reports, put filters on those reports. Uh, initially, before the last Salesforce update, uh, that feature was not there. And since that feature was not there and people were not getting the files in a comma separate value, uh, they had to actually use PDF or a different Word format where it was actually very difficult to uh, manipulate the reports and send it to someone else by doing some kind of filters or anything like that. So that is something. Plus there were other features uh, that I don't remember at the top of my head now, but that was one of the main features that actually users loved uh, about reports uh, in the latest Salesforce update. 
So that sounds like a great feature to be able to send it to other teammates or to leadership that don't necessarily want to log into Salesforce to see the information or data. So that's something that can land in their email box sure. that's a little bit more accessible to them. Is that a feature that is yeah. automatically updated for everyone or do they actually have to go through and um, uh, mark a checkbox to, it, to make that update in sales? Yeah, you have to actually uh, move to the latest Salesforce uh, update, right? You have to update your org to enable that feature. So when you actually update your Salesforce org, uh, there's a list of features that come up with that update, right? You have to actually choose uh, what you want to update, what you don't want to update. And I think that is a, a very valid point that you have brought up, you know. Uh, whenever you are updating something in Salesforce or in Nimble or in any other uh, system, uh, you should be very, very careful in doing that. And you should never, uh, and you should actually uh, talk to your technical team uh, and to your business users uh, before doing that update. Because sometimes what happens is, and we have seen a lot of cases where uh, Salesforce administrators have just updated the entire Salesforce org and uh, things have just collapsed, right? Because there may be a feature which they didn't want and that has actually messed up uh, the old objects uh, and then it took us a while to understand what was done and bring the system back to normal. So I would suggest whenever you are doing an update, be very careful, talk to everyone and only update those features which uh, are actually very, very relevant to your org because there are a lot of features which you don't need and you don't require. And since you have live members using your system uh going system down is a loss loss of your branding right so your system should be up and your data should be correct and with all these data laws in place right where uh, you have a lot of data privacy issues and everything uh, you should actually take care of uh, your data because if uh, if that information is visible to anyone else right and members can actually sue you, right? And uh, they lose trust in your system. So always, I always advise when you are doing a Salesforce update, uh, keep a database backup of your old system so that even if things go wrong, uh, you are able to switch back to the old system and become normal uh, and uh, make the system live so that users can actually start using it and then see what happened wrong. So there are some tips that, uh, uh, these are some small tips that we actually uh, give to our customers uh, whenever they are updating their systems. Sorry to derail and, you, but uh, we can you know, add. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, when you were talking about the Salesforce update, I remember one of the uh, features that was there for this reporting stuff. So in the latest Salesforce update, what has happened is uh, you you see this filter right where we have applied. Uh, record type equals donation right now what we may uh, what uh, so whenever you pick this feature right this uh, filter actually goes into your report url which is there in your browser right so in the latest salesforce feature what you can do is you can actually uh, apply this filter and save that url right so once you save that URL, what will happen is you can actually send that URL to your team members. And uh, then what they will be able to see is what you are able to see here, this, this report, right? Without applying any filters to it because you've already saved that filters in a URL and they don't have to do step two and three, right? They just hit the URL and they will get the uh report final output right so that saves time and training for them and everyone is seeing the same view so i think that was one of the features that got implemented in the latest salesforce release that i think we talked about in our uh last webinar as well right well let's go move on to the dashboards that you have to show us i think that will be of interest yeah. to many different levels of and different types of organizations as well sure uh, we have chosen five dashboards, uh, which I think are, uh, these are personally my favorite dashboards and uh, because they present you with a lot of information and give you a, a quite a informative view about uh, 
and different things. So this is the event dashboard, all right? Uh, so this is like, if you can see, uh, there are a lot of uh, stuff in this, right? So this is coming from an event app, which has been integrated with Nimble, right? As you can see, uh, this is integrated with Nimble and uh, you have an event app uh, that is integrated. So you can see the type of uh, reports that you can produce, right? You can have, you can view the upcoming events uh, that are there and your members can also view it, right? You can give uh, access to these dashboard to some of your members, right? So there are two types of dashboards. One are called public dashboards, which are actually visible to everyone. You don't need to give any permissions. And there are a second type of dashboards called private dashboards. So when you say private, uh, they are private to you and you can share it uh, with some people you want, right? So like this dashboard, you can share it with uh, whoever, whoever you want to. And he will be able to see a complete view of whatever reports you want to uh, make him view, right? So you can have who registered for your event, right? uh so registrations by type of event so how many people actually attended the conferences how many people actually attended webinars who are interested in educational opportunities so this pie graph will actually give you a, a view of that right then you have registrations by council status right so how many active members actually registered how many were non-members right so non-members who have come to your event, right, actually become your prospects or leads, right, because they were not associated with your association, but they are someone who are actually interested in your event. So you can treat them as your leads and prospects. Then who are the members who are, who are actually resigned your system, but still interested in your events? Who are the grace members, meaning that who are actually running in the grace period? So all these, information you can get just by viewing this dashboard right and then you can always uh, drill down right so you can always drill down into this you can click this button and it will actually give take you to the entire report if you want the entire report on that then you have registrations by foundation type so who how many us members were there how many were private foundations how many were community foundations how many were public charities so all this so all this, so if you see oh, sorry so if you see these two figures are the same the total number of registrations right but we have bifurcated them into two reports one by foundation type and one by council status right and then on the financial side you can see the registration payments how it happened and then registration payments based on organization type as well so you can pull any event report right this is just a sample of some of the uh, reports that we have pulled in this dashboard and this dashboard can keep changing you may have more reports into it as you require right and uh, eliminate what you don't require so it's it's all customizable right you prepare reports and you just pick that into your dashboard whichever you want to and uh, you can share those dashboards with whoever you want to and they can have the same view as you want to by maybe you are sitting in us there is someone sitting in europe but he is actually seeing the same view as you are seeing in terms of your events so i think that is the beauty of dashboards and obviously all these colorful graphs and everything that makes it more presentable uh, to anyone whom you want to present. So I think it creates a very good impression on your users uh, if or your management, whomsoever you want to share those events with. It's just great to be able to see the same information across, uh, everybody's seeing the same thing as opposed to pulling their own reports and trying to figure out what to uh, make out of it. Right, and I think that is the basic uh, 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 beauty of the dashboards that everyone is viewing the same information in the same format seeing the same figures. Uh, now, you can actually understand your members better if you have this kind of dashboard. So uh, if you see, we have this report where you say most recent renewed members. 
So this means that uh, these are the members who have actually renewed and uh, they are your stable customers, but uh, you need to understand them better so that they further renew and trade. So similarly, you can see members who have not renewed, right? And maybe uh, you can see the members whose membership date is expiring in the next 30 days and still they have not uh, renewed their membership. So I think it's a, a great insight to you to maybe approach them and ask them the reason why they're not renewed or maybe send them reminders and maybe understand what kind of issues they are facing in your system because there might be some reason uh, why they have not renewed their membership. So it's always good to understand why not, right? And maybe make things better for them or maybe have some improvements in your system so that uh, their problems are solved. So, and then you can see uh, members by your country. So which country has the highest members for your association, right? Which state has that? So you can have that bifurcation and maybe you can target more states, right? And you can see like, what is, why is the state of California actually the highest for my members? Uh, why is Arizona not uh, picking up, right? So all this kind of, and maybe you can plan your sales and your marketing depending on the location or the state or the country, right? So all these things will actually not just help you in understanding your members, it will actually help your sales team, it will help your marketing team, maybe your finance team. I think everyone uh, right from uh, top to bottom of the hierarchy. So I think uh, these, these are like, like just two good reports. I love them whenever I see them. And our customers love them as well. <laughs> So then when I was talking about uh, reports, right? So whenever we talk about reports, we cannot uh, uh, separate out data, right? Because reports is ultimately uh, data that is being there in your system. So unless I have that uh, data in place. So if I go to this report and if, uh, so I'm seeing the total number of members by country and state, right? Now, Take an example where all these uh, states uh, are not correct in your system. So what will happen is it will show you wrong data here and you will have a uh, misjudged perception about things, right? Which will actually hamper your marketing, which will actually hamper your sales, which will actually hamper your understanding about your members, right? Because uh, imagine that uh, instead of 87 in California, it is just uh, uh, the data pulls out at 70 because the data is not uh, correct in your system. So all these things will actually hamper your growth. So it's always uh, good to clean your data and it should be a continuous activity. In our previous webinars, uh, we have stressed a lot on data cleaning activity. And that is why, because the system, the data in your system is not clean, uh, it would be a big problem because the ultimate aim of your AMS is then gone. Uh, you're not getting the value derived out of it because the data that is dumped into your system is all wrong. So what we educate our customers and what we tell our customers is it's good to have these kind of dashboards, the events dashboard, the membership dashboard, but one of the dashboard that we have implemented in a lot of uh, of our customers org is this data cleansing dashboard, right? And you, as you can see, it's still in the uh, early stages, but we are still working on it. But what kind of data you can get, you can get a list of members whose date of birth is wrong, who are missing data, whose data is not complete, right? And once you are able to get that kind of view, you, are, you can actually run certain scripts or you can ask your technical team to run those scripts and correct that data. And again, put it in a dashboard and see if that has been corrected or not. So I think for me, the most important dashboard to, which is the base of all the dashboards is data cleansing dashboard, because unless this is correct, uh, all other dashboards will give you false information. So if you're not doing it, please do that. And if you don't know how to do it, uh, take some help uh, and maybe 
we have stressed a lot on these data cleansing stuff. Uh, we always prefer, suggest that you have a separate data cleansing team who is looking after your data and cleansing it regularly, right? Because if you're not doing that, then the whole purpose of these reports and dashboards is not solving your purpose. Now, this is where you can actually track activity. So this is one of our uh, legal associations who actually give uh, information on uh, legal things to different associations. So you can see legal RFIs here, request for information, where uh, depending on changing in federal laws or government policies, they tell associations on how they should take care of it. So these are the kind of activities they are tracking. Then legal compendium where they have a guide on, uh, they have a guide which has different chapters and they actually sell it on their store. So, and different association of members buy it. So it's actually a sales item for them. So you can actually see they are tracking the list of uh, how many information is still pending, uh, how many are, and what type of uh, inquiries are they getting from which type of associations are they getting it? And that actually helps them to plan better, right? So if you see this blue one, right? Most of the uh, informations they are getting from the community foundations, right? Um, the next is the corporate grand makers. So they can actually, they know what their main target audience is, right? So they can actually plan their stuff uh, based on that target audience, because unless you understand where your target audience is, you cannot actually customize your stuff based on that. And that is what reports tell you. These kind of reports actually tell you that and gives you an insight deep into your members and uh, customers. Because unless you have these kind of dashboards, you will never be able to uh, understand what is happening with your members. You can never track their activities. You will never know whether they are actually happy with your system or they are finding some issues in the system. So all this actually gives you a crunch of everything. Uh, it pulls out the summary uh, of how your member health is, right? So the right word is how your member health is. Uh, and uh, if the member health is not good, which I mean that if most of your members are not renewing their memberships, you should actually revisit and see uh, what is wrong in the system. And this is monitor grants. We pulled this in report as well, right? So you can have how many uh, grants uh, were actually given, how many restricted grants were there, how many unrestricted grants were there. So as you know, restricted grants are for the purpose where you actually specify that they have to go to a specific uh, cause, right? You cannot just use it anywhere. And on, uh, unrestricted grants are something where you can actually see it can be actually used anywhere. So all this kind of information you can actually get through these dashboards and you can see this report that we actually pulled in. Uh, this was a report I was talking about, top grant funders. This was the report that I we actually created uh, in our previous slides. Uh, so what we did was we, so what you can do is you can create that report, right? And then just make a dashboard and stick it into here, right? So this will actually load whenever your dashboard loads. And you can have many uh, reports pertaining to grants, like unrestricted grants, restricted grants, and just uh, stick it into these dashboards. And you can have that, so you can have funders by type. Uh, you can see your sponsorship revenue. So everything related to, and you can have multiple dashboards in your system. It's not that you can have one dashboard, all these dashboards that I've shown you, right? They are a part of uh, one org, right? We have done it for one org. We have got event dashboards. We have got membership dashboards. We have got grants dashboard. We have got uh, data cleansing dashboard, all right? So all these five dashboards we have, and there are many more, right? You can build many more. It's all customizable. Uh, you could just have to pull a report and just stick to a dashboard and you can actually see it. So I think this is this is uh, what we wanted to, uh, I wanted to actually highlight about rewards and dashboards that it's easy to make. 
right? There is nothing scary about it. And it's easy to make dashboards as well. But you just have to make sure that uh, you understand your AMS features well. Uh, you understand how to make reports. And you make sure that uh, you have a data teasing team so that you are able to identify bad data so that all these reports have meaningful information and make, make sense to you, make sense to your management and gives you a direction where you can actually understand your members better and engage with them well. Right? That is the only way to move forward, I think. And that is the whole beauty of these dashboards and reports. Well, great. Thank you very much, Nitish. Now I've got a few takeaways. If you, um, before I jump into the takeaways, if you all have any questions, definitely jump in, put those in the chat box. Nitish is happy to take those or into the Q&A. We'll take those. But Nitish, you know, some of the takeaways I got from your discussion today is, you know, it seems like all these reports can all be done in Nimble. And there's no reason to export anything and do crunching outside. So that's wonderful. They can all be done in Nimble and Salesforce. The other thing that I learned that there's something for every department, whether you're in events, in membership, fundraising, grant management, volunteer management, or in the executive leadership, there's a report for someone and a dashboard for every department. So that's great to see. The other thing I also um, learned is that this puts everyone on the same page, but that's with the caveat that the data is clean. So that's something that needs to be ongoing, that to make sure you run those reports, to make sure you're actually reporting on the, the right stuff. It's inevitable, uh, it seems like, to, to have a little bit of dirty data. It's like a, it's like a house. You're going to collect dust. You're going to have to clean that dust off and, and get to um, a spick and span kind of state. So thank you for that. Before we leave today, Nitish, is there anything you would like to leave us with? Yeah, I think uh, as I always say, right, uh, you have to. You always. Uh, you also said that you have to keep your house clean, right? So you have to clean it daily, right? Otherwise, what will happen is the dirt will get collected, and it will take more of a time if you do it weekly or monthly right you cannot do it monthly or weekly so you have to do it daily uh, similarly with the reports and dashboards the base is data cleansing the data has to be clean uh, make sure that you have a team in place and that is what i tell everyone uh, have, make sure that there is a continuous team who is checking your dashboards uh, this data cleansing dashboard uh, writing scripts to correct that coordinating with the business users to do that and obviously, uh, once you have that, then these reports and dashboards are easy to make in Nimble. There is nothing, no rocket science to create these reports and dashboards. A simple user can also make it. Uh, but if you are not able to do that and you are not able to find that I'm struggling with creating reports and dashboards in Nimble, uh, you're always there to help and guide you in the best possible way and find the easy solution to it. Right. Well, thank you very much, Nitish, for taking the time to share with us some of your favorite dashboards and the how-to tips. Um, everyone, thank you for joining us today. This has been an a -I webinar about how to create complicated reports and dashboards in Nimble, but this can also apply to any Salesforce instance. So thank you for joining us. We hope that you join us for our next webinar, which is on April 1st. I'll actually be going uh, over the total cost of having Salesforce and managing that. So go be, go beyond your user licenses and actually look at the labor and staff costs that go behind it. Um, we'll actually find ways that you may be able to save and also how uh, some cost-effective help solutions for you. So I hope you can join me. That's April 1st at 1 p.m. You can sign up on our website, www.aplusify.com slash webinars. Again, thank you for joining us. We loved having you. If you need any help, you know where to reach us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.